Married people, how long does love really last? When I first got married, we would be intimate everywhere. We would do things for each other. And we enjoyed each other's company. She was from Japan. I am a white American. I learned to speak Japanese and we lived in Japan for a few years and life was good. We had kids together. Okay. So the question is how long does love last? I think I can comment on this. I am a married potato. But over the years things grew cold between us. They say that people change and you grow apart. I don't think either of us changed. I doubt that most people change. What I suspected happened was that I would base my love on how much she loved me and vice versa. If she did something nice for me, I would do something nice for her. Or if I did something Mmm. See, I, I already. Already. I see the immediate problem. The issue here does not seem like it's just from that statement alone. Lack of love doesn't seem to be the problem. What seems to be the problem is your love is transactional. So you are only willing to give the amount of love that you receive and everything is just like a trade off. So it's like I, I do this for you. You do that for me. And that's not how it's supposed to be like you're both supposed to give unconditionally to each other and there it's supposed to kind of work itself out that way it should never be a competition you should never be trying to meet some kind of quota or it shouldn't be a tit for tat thing like it's going to be like that's how it'll end up if you truly love each other unconditionally and you know like you guys are working through this together that's just kind of how it ends up but it's never really 50 50 or even you guys just do what you can for each other whenever both of you can so like i, I know a lot of people i just made a post about this recently but a lot of people strive for 50 50 and, it, and if it's not straight 50 50 flat down the middle at all times then things fall apart but you shouldn't strive for that you should strive to give your all and they should strive to give their all and whenever they fall or they're weak and can't do as much as they were doing before you pick up the slack and vice versa like that's how it should be you should not have a transactional system when it comes to love and doing things for each other because that's how things die that's that's how love dies in a relationship so let's continue on and see what else he has to say something nice for her she would do something nice for me that all sounds fine and dandy, but I think in practice, it doesn't work. No, it when doesn't. I do something nice for her, I expect something of equal niceness in return. However, often is the case that you don't perceive what is done in return to be as valuable as what you gave him or her. So then And that's the problem. That's the problem right there. Is whenever you measure the things that you do for somebody you care about, whenever they reciprocate, it is measured based on what you've done for them. And as you said, most of the time it doesn't really stack up because you value what you did for them more than they do. And that's a problem. You shouldn't do things for other people for your own benefit, I should say. A lot of times when you do good things for other people, it does also benefit you, but that's usually just a side effect. It shouldn't be the reason that you're doing it or else you'll end up in whatever situation I'd imagine he's about to end up. The next time you do something, you feel less inclined to do something nice. And so the love kind of fizzles. You basically stop caring because you perceive your partner is not caring. There and you chances go. are your partner feels the same way about you. Neither mm -hmm. person has changed. They are both the same person, but the love isn't there anymore. They let it spiral into nothingness. That is what my wife and I did. After 20 years of marriage, there was nothing. I really had no desire to do anything for my wife because she wasn't going to do anything for me. Yeah, they're, they're, 20 years, man. That is crazy. 20 years y'all been together and you just literally just stopped doing things for each other because at the end of the day, every time you did something for the other person, you just felt it wasn't being reciprocated at the same level. So why do anything? It, it's, you know, and, and I, if that mindset makes sense, if both of you, if one of you, like and neither one of you, and that's the tripped out part, neither one of you in this situation were giving the other person the type of love that they deserve because they deserved it. You were doing it because you were anticipating getting something back from it. Both parties, usually it's just one. And that, that you know, that breaks out because the one person is given their all and the other person is like, you know, they only do when you do for them which 
doesn't even make up uh, like make sense because if the other person is constantly doing things for you and you feel like you're only like it's it's a weird system and it doesn't even really make sense that relationships end up like that but yeah this this sounds like um it just sounds far too transactional to me we didn't hate each other we helped each other when needed but that is about all i was unhappy with the marriage i either wanted out or i wanted it fixed but after 20 years of marriage I knew that she wasn't going to try and fix the marriage. I knew that she thought I would not change so she should not have to do anything special. And if I did change it would only be temporary and things would go back to how they were, so why even try? I knew this would be her mindset. So I had three options. Divorce, stay in a lifeless, intimateless marriage, or take a chance and do something about it. I thought- Let's hope he did something about it because like, honestly, sometimes all it takes is for another person, like especially when, when both parties have kind of fallen off, it's somebody's duty to take the initiative and and take that next step and push things forward to try to progress things like one of y'all has to take the reins and some people say oh it's the man's job it's the woman's job or whatever it's it's both of your job to do it it's just gonna come down to whoever is the strongest in the relationship you know what i mean um i don't really think it's specifically designated for either person somebody has to take the reins and both of y'all are riding in the same carriage so either you both go down or somebody takes the initiative so um hopefully that's what he did because it just sounds sad this sounds so sad that they've been together so long and they got to this point perhaps divorce would be the better way start anew she had given up on me and didn't care but i decided to give it a try anyway i completely revamped my approach I decided that I would try for one year to fix this. I would not require her to do anything. I would just do these things on my own. If these things would her back then she would be back on her own terms and not mine. So, I committed to getting into shape. I got a better diet and started exercising. I committed to do something special for her every day, regardless of whether we were getting along or not. I com See, that, that's how it should have been. That's, this is how it should have been from the beginning. You guys could have, look, here's the thing. Here's the tripped out part. Throughout this crazy transactional situation that you guys have created, you managed to last 20 years, which in itself is incredible. Like that is mind blowing that you lasted 20 years with the type of system that you guys had, which shows that proves that you guys absolutely loved each other. You just were approaching the situation all wrong. I promise you, I don't know how this story is going to end, but I guarantee it. I can almost guarantee that she is going to notice these changes and, and she is absolutely going to reciprocate because there's no way you guys lasted this long. And, and she does. She won't. She wants to feel appreciated just like you want to feel appreciated. Like that's that's all this is. It's two people who want to feel loved and appreciated, but they they just felt like, you know, well, I want this, but the only way I'm going to give it is if I'm getting it. And that was still the wrong approach. But somebody took the reins, took the initiative and decided to I'm, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be very unconditional about my love. I'm going to love you no matter what, no matter what condition you're in, no matter if I feel like you earned it or deserved it or not. I'm just going to shower you with love. And I promise you she's going to reciprocate. Watch. I hope I hope I'm right. That would be that would suck if this is like, yeah, we broke it off and we never got back together again. It was. Yeah. Holy crap. Committed to do at least an additional 30 minutes of housework every day. I committed to pay her a sincere compliment at least once per day. I committed not to fight with her and to only have calm arguments with her. I decided to make her dinner and breakfast as often as possible. In essence, I decided to love her every day. As I thought, I got essentially no response from her day after day. I mean, she would sometimes say, thank you, but that was about it. After a- Oh. <laughs> That's not what I wanted to hear. I mean, it well, it's not immediate though, because he did say that his fear was that she felt that he was going to start making changes and then stop like it was just going to be temporary and i can see after 20 years why she would think that so I, I i guess i can't expect it to be immediate but come on story we gotta have a happy ending for about four months she started to change i kept at it well she didn't really change she was the same person but she saw that i was trying she okay. saw that she was important to me she saw that i wasn't giving up she wanted to be loved she started doing things for me again we started talking a lot more and doing a lot more together 
we started dating again and going on trips. It was almost like we were newlyweds again, but with less wow. passion, but it felt great. Sometimes I would see he said with less passion, which is kind of crazy because like a lot of people base their relationship status off of how much passion is left in the relationship. And I think that's really stupid because things like passion and happiness and stuff like that, it's fleeting. There are going to be times where you're not happy. There are going to be times when things aren't passionate all the time. And those are the times where communication and, you know, just understanding each other and, and trying to, you know, trying new things comes into play. Um, basing the entire stability on your uh, of your relationship on whether or not things are passionate 24-7 or you're happy 24-7, that's why the divorce rate is so high. Like, it's it's, it's crazy because people are like, oh, I, I spent three seconds not happy. This relationship needs to end. It's like, it's crazy, man. Like you're gonna be unhappy sometimes. You're gonna be upset sometimes. You're gonna the passion is gonna fizzle out sometimes. But it's your job and your spouse's job to rekindle that and to keep that going and bring it back up. Like it, you know, that's just how it's supposed to be. Just hold her in my arms for 30 minutes. Love can be revived. It yes. is not easy. True love takes work. Making the decision above to love her regardless was the second best decision of my life. There you the go. First, of course, was to marry her. Our marriage is not perfect, but I look forward to seeing her every day. No marriage is. I don't believe anybody who tells me that their marriage is perfect. I am automatically suspicious of anyone who says, oh, yeah. Oh, shut up, phone. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, my, my marriage is absolutely perfect. There's no problems at all. Like, everything is completely flawless. I'm automatically suspicious of that. Because even if they put on a front, like when they're out in public and stuff, that everything is great, like you're you're still human beings. Like that's it. Like it's not like I'm hating or I'm just like, oh, no way, you can't be happy all the time because I just, you know, I'm jealous and I don't want you to feel that way. Like no, it's it's you're you're literally two human beings coexisting. There's gonna be friction. That's how it works. <laughs> like there's no way everything is flawless. That it just can't be. She is an awesome woman. She is basically the same person I married. We just let our love die. We were lazy lovers. She asked me one day what got into me and I talked with her about my plan. I think it was a pretty good plan and so did she. Yes, we are still married, but much happier now. You can't base your actions on what the other is doing in return. You need to commit to love regardless of what is done in return. That is the There you go, man. That is, yes, there it is. He said it, he said it. You cannot base your relationship on what you're gonna get in return. If that's what your relationship is about, you're with the wrong person or you are the wrong person for that, for that matter, not even specifically, you're with the wrong person. If that's your mindset, then people aren't going to be able to maintain a relationship with you. It's just, you know, like, and, and I know some, some people will probably argue like, well, why would you be in a relationship if you're not getting back what you're putting in? It's not, that's not the issue here. It's, it's not the issue here. Like, obviously, if you're not getting back what you're putting in and you're giving it your all and not being transactional like the other person, then, of course, there's a problem. It needs to be addressed and you shouldn't stay in a situation where people are not reciprocating. But that's not the issue here. It's not it's not about that in this case. In this case, it's like going into it yourself, your personal mindset being I refuse to do anything for this person who I supposedly care about unless they do something for me. Like, it's just, you know, it, it, no, neither party should be thinking that way. And if any party is thinking that way, that party is in the wrong. Like, I'm sorry, that's just the way it works. A real love will begin. Real love is eternal. Okay, yeah, that was it. That, yeah, I like that. That was really good. That was a good... It, it's still kind of baffling, though, that they managed to last as long as they did with that system. How long does love really last? <clears throat> with that system that they were going with, man, that's kind of nuts to even think about. Because I, I can't think of very, very many relationships that can maintain like that for an extended period of time. But, you know... True love is true love, man. And if you if you have the means to make whatever situation work, uh, especially if you're married, because, you know, marriage is supposed to be for life. You need to do it like you need to make it work. And also what's really important 
is this dude, this person in this story did something absolutely incredible. And the reason that I'm calling it incredible, even though it shouldn't be called incredible, is because it's super, super rare nowadays. He looked at his situation, he looked at his relationship, he looked at his partner, and he looked at himself. And he said, how can I fix this? What role have I played in this situation? What blame can I take in this transaction? And that is unheard of in 2023. Like people, every everybody, the internet and all these influencers and different things like that, all these people on these podcasts and stuff are constantly cultivating this culture of nothing is your fault. You're always right about everything. Everything you feel is valid no matter what. And if there's a problem going on in your life, then all you need to do is just locate the external thing that's causing it because there's no way it's you. There's no way. It's always something else. It's always someone else. And if you if you if you think that it's me or you insinuate that it could possibly be me or that it has something to do with me, you're either gaslighting me or or, or some crap like that. It's it's stupid. It, it is a is a really stupid culture that we've kind of cultivated now where people just there's no accountability and i'm not talking about male or female or or you know black people or white people or i'm just talking about humans in general in this generation or this just th this year have an overall lack of accountability that is really just getting kind of out of hand it's really getting out of hand no matter where you look up down left or right there are people constantly complaining about their lives and their situations and they never ever even consider they never consider it is never a possibility that it could be them that they could possibly be contributing to this in some way and it's bad man it's really bad but that's a conversation for another day i hope you guys enjoyed the video uh let me know what you guys think about it down below and i will see you guys on the next one